the Lions tour is other good news from this week. Yes, well. Who, no one thought this was going to happen in South Africa. It wasn't going to happen in South Africa. Now we got it, and it's great. Yeah, well, it's, I think it's exciting for... Um, well, I think it's exciting to see the world champions, first and foremost. It's been a mm. while since the World Cup final, and um, I think for their playing base, um, and, I mean, what a way to start. Win a World Cup final, and then your first test match back is to play the Lions. I mean, as we all know, as players and as fans, there's no better to... Um, and, you know, there was options to go to Aussie and, um, you know, maybe play it in the UK or whatever. But if they can pull it off and, and play it in, in South Africa, mm. um, oh, I mean, it will be awesome. Whether there's crowds, I don't think there is crowds at this stage. Or, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. But um, it's really exciting for the South African team and, and for the Lions team as well. What do you do here, Bryn? You've barely played test football. In fact, you haven't played test football in a year or so. Um, you've got a warm-up game against the USA, which you know is, is a nice enough warm-up, but not exactly a stiff challenge in comparison to the players coming into the Lions team who've played in a really brutal and really entertaining Six Nations. If you're South Africa, are you on the back foot here? I think preparation-wise, that might be the case. It's, quite, it's pretty similar to what the Lions have to go through. That kind of they all come together. Uh, they don't play a lot of rugby, test rugby together, so. It actually might be a little bit of an equaliser. And I think, you know, don't forget that it's at altitude as well. Um, so it's always tougher to play in South Africa with a bit of altitude. And look, they'll be that hungry to, to prove themselves again. You know, they're the world champions. They haven't played a lot of test match. So if you're talking around guys that are just wanting to have an opportunity to play for their country, um, you know, South Africa will be that excited about it. And if you look around, we talk around lack of preparation. We took a look at Argentina last year in the um, like a championship where you know, they didn't have a lot of preparation even though they, they did have a few warm-up games where they weren't playing a lot of rugby and they were to come in and then you know they ended up having one of the better performance against the All Blacks so I think preparation inside it they might have a little they'll be a little bit underdone there but you know it's no different to what the British Irish Alliance have to do as well you know they they came from all different nations and come together so um, excitement and probably um, not playing a lot of test matches and putting on the South African um, emblem will motivate a lot of guys uh, but at the same time, it is, it is at home. It's in, in home conditions. And we all know, mate, how hard it is to play oh, in South Africa. I reckon it's a masterstroke because they can just, there's no expectation. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the expectation is the Lions will turn up and win because they've had no preparation and they'll play on that. They'll send out, oh, you know, we're underdone. And then they'll just come out on that first test. And, and you know, people, if they lose, then they've gone to the, you know the the I suppose the the ad that you know that they're underdone. If they win, well, you know that's they've exceeded the expectation. Everyone's excited, and and then the series is on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and they've got that first sort of taste, and the adrenaline's running. And I and I you know like Bryn said with RG, I, I think there'll be that much excitement, that much adrenaline. I just don't see, especially the South Africans like representing their country and, and their people and what it means it's, it's so much bigger than than the game mm. you know like it'll be uh, they'll, they'll they'll be all business they'll, they'll get the job job done like I don't know if they'll win the series but they, they'll put on a, a, a pretty big shift and just expanding on Bryn's point the South Africans are used to coming from far and wide aren't they you know the clerks over here and Billy LaRue's in Japan and you know they're from all around the place so they're mm. kind of used to being in that predicament where they don't come in like the All Blacks do for little camps in the middle of Super Rugby. Yeah and also I think they've they've obviously learned a lot the way they built towards the World Cup and the way they bonded and, and the way they structured and, and I suppose their mindsets and the way uh, Rassi Erasmus sort of built their psyche around that and, and, and I'm sure he'll have a bit to do in the planning and, and how they'll prepare and, and you know build towards this will be will be similar or uh, no different. So I, I think they'll be well planned and prepped and, and, and ready to go to make sure that they make their country proud. Yeah. The other big question for me is who plays at 10 for this Lions? Oh, it has to be Finn Russell. It's Finn Russell. Yeah, uh, Farrell at 12. Yeah, George Ford hasn't been good enough this year to really warrant a selection. Oh, it's not that he hasn't been good enough. It's just yeah. Finn Russell, mate. He's I, he's just one of those players that I just think he can just do special things. You know, you, you almost you just uh, he's just he's a creator, and and I think with um, you know Farrell outside him as as a settler, it's I just think it would be a good, really 
neat combination to see and then maybe if you have Ford in the squad if it doesn't work at least you can you, you can revert to something you know that does work. The, the crucial thing is, 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 I suppose, what works for Warren Gatlin's style because he's going to coach a certain way. Does Finn Russell fit into that style? I don't know. So that's what they'll have to work out as a, as a coaching group. You know, it's all well and good me sitting here going, geez, I've just watched Scotland on the weekend beat France and he was great to watch and he just throws everything at it and he's pretty... He's pretty happy-go-lucky guy. Even when he got a red card, <laughs> yeah. he was just like, "Yeah, see you guys." Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, he was just like, "Sorry," you know. Gives an elbow to the throat and just pretty relaxed sort of customer. Um, and you know, you sort of just get the vibe. He's pretty, you know, he's not going to die of an ulcer sort of thing. So, you know, he he might bring a nice vibe to to the, to the team. So, is that going to fit? With the Warren Gatlin style, I don't know. So they'll have to come up with that. It might not, you know, it might be a six and might go back to the uh, tried and true. Dan Biggers performed pretty well for the Welsh side as well. So there's more people in that selection mix mm. than just those three. Um, but, you know, going on current form, um, you know, those guys are in the mix. A couple of young players as well. Those two um, Welsh wingers have to be in there. Adams yeah. and... Um, Rhys yeah, Zemmett. Um, the Sam Simmons, I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but there's a lot of chat for him to make the English side. There's a lot of talk that potentially he gets picked in the Lions squad. He's playing that well in the Premiership. So that, I mean, that would be a pretty big feat to not be able to make England and then, then pick, be picked in the Lions. And that's kind of a tradition in the Lions, isn't it, Bryn? We often see a person who's a bit of a bolter that wouldn't be selected by the national coach and makes it into the Lions and then plays a big role. I think when they came down here, the English hooker, um, stop, Jamie George. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, he jumped past his national captain. That's and right. And started yeah, for the yeah. Lions. Um, so there's a couple of cool selections. I think George North has really reinvented himself at centre. He's had a great Six Nations. Um, I think probably um, Alan Wynne Jones has probably put himself at, at, right in the mix of a skipper. Warren Gatlin knows him really well. Had him as a skipper. Um, you know, or Ken Owens is there as well. He's probably one of the form hookers. You know. Um, Mara Toji has been talked about, and maybe it's best to just let him be a beast in the second row. So there's, I mean, there's, there's selection. They've got enough there. Yeah. Um, they've, they've got a, plenty of guys in form. Um, you know, and and there, there's a, there's a little bit of fresh talent as well to put in there to spice things up. It's, it, but again, it goes back to um, what works for Gatlin and his style um, is is crucial as well. You know, traditionally, he's been based around like winning that halfway battle line. Um, a little bit more conservative and been able to put back your defense. You know, you look at that British Arch line so when they came here, you know, Aaron, Andy Fowler was in there and the messaging that he was giving around them being the world's best, wanting to be the world's best, put these guys under pressure. So traditionally, Warren Gatlin is, is based around that. Um, again, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, the thing with, with Warren, he's pretty low around what he wants and the players that he's that have proven. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm glad you brought up Finn Russell, Jeff. Yeah, I think for a guy that's um, warranted on form, you know, he's probably the form 10 in that British and Irish Lions uh, makeup. But again, does he fit into what Warren wants? And a lot of these other players that you know we've talked about, does it fit into the idea of what he wants to play? Again, you know, South African conditions could be a little bit different. It won't be as wet, uh, possibly. I'm um, just thinking our time. It won't be as wet when you're when you're there. So it'll be a lot more drier. Um, so then, I guess. The change of style, do they play a, a Northern Hemisphere kind of style based around their defense, or are they just going to open up a little bit, you know, get Finn Russell for one of those test matches because he's, you know, a little bit more of a, of a runner and a bit more elusive than if Johnny Sexton. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Warren goes because uh, there's kind of decisions around how they're going to play 